Hello and welcome to yet another nuclear craft update video. We're now on 2.17, uh, 2.17 I suppose. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this list, so we'll try and get through it as quickly as possible. Uh, the first thing is that uh, slightly modified machine textures. So uh, the new machine textures I hope are a little bit better than they were before. I didn't like the shading on the, on the ones before. And so uh, this makes them look a little bit more metallic, I think. Um, they are a bit flat still, I think, is, is one problem with them. But they're, I'm not a texture artist, I'm not really the textures. Um, I think they're probably as good as they're ever going to look. And I think the alloy furnace in particular looks a lot better. Um, I don't have one here, but if you have a look at that, that's much better than the old one. Um, the old one looked really weird. Um, it was based on the old red power alloy furnace, if you remember that. Uh, but it didn't actually look very good, so I, I mixed it up. Um, so the next thing is feral ghouls added to the nuclear wasteland. Now, we're not in a nuclear wasteland here, but I can spawn some feral ghouls. Um, they're pretty nasty things, actually. Oh, actually, we're in, uh, we're in peaceful mode. Hang on, let's go into easy mode. So let's spawn these things down a little bit. Uh, these things are pretty nasty, actually. Um, I'm going to fight some just to show you what they're like. Um, they normally spawn in the nuclear wasteland, as I say. Um, they won't, they'll, they're quite rare. Uh, they won't spawn... Uh, I don't think more than 10 will ever spawn at once. Um, so that's, I suppose, a good thing when you see how these things fight. Let's go into game mode uh, S. Ooh, game mode S. Let's watch these things. I, can, I do not have permission to use the command. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not in a server anymore. I'm in, I'm in a land world. Okay, try that. Update to survival mode. Here we go. Here they come. And they run at you and jump. It's, they're kind of horrible, actually. Um, but, you know, that's how it is. And they're actually also poisoning me. Um, well, actually, they're ra irradiating me with the radiation. You can see that up to 18 millirads per tick of poison. So they do do quite a lot of poison. So poison, that poison effect will actually go straight through hazmat. That's why it went up so high. Um, it will just ignore armor. Um, so there we go. I killed them. They dropped a carrot. So I suppose they drop the same stuff as zombies. And uh, yeah, there we go. That is uh, that is them. They're pretty pretty scary, actually. Um, so there we go. That's uh, ghouls. Uh, awesome, I suppose. Uh, next thing is uh, added option for radiation from structures, such as villages, strongholds, dungeons, etc. So this is pretty cool. Um, thanks to McJT. Um, of course, McJT is one of the ultimate modders there is. Um, thank you very much for the code for that. Um, I asked him if uh, I could use it, and he was like, yeah, sure. Awesome guy. And it works really well. So basically, you can go into the configs and make like strongholds have a certain radiation level. So when you get close to them, you'll start like getting a lot of radiation. They'll spread out radiation. Which is pretty cool, actually. So what I'm thinking is uh, in the overhaul, when well, whenever I get to it, whenever I get to, you know, structures in the wasteland, um, what I'll probably have is the wasteland itself will probably not have quite as high a background radiation level as it does now, but I'll have the structures, like the, uh, you know, the abandoned buildings and so forth, they'll have a high radiation level. And so you have to con go and explore through them. Um, and I think like that, I think that'd be pretty cool, actually. So I look forward to adding that sort of stuff at some point in the future. Uh, added config for food, radi food radiation and rad resistance effects. So if I type in food effects here, you will see that there are various items which already by default have effects. So golden apples, for example, take away radiation and give you a little bit of rad resistance. Um, all of these things that like poison you and so forth, I've given them rad resistance to make them a little bit less useless. Um, and uh, golden carrot, bit of, bit of radiation taken away. Uh, rabbit stew gives a little bit of radiation resistance. Uh, Chorus Fruit actually gives you minus red resistance. So when you get minus red resistance, so let's actually eat one of these things just to sort of demonstrate, perhaps. So we're at 48 nanorads per tick. Hopefully it will go up a little bit when I eat this. Oh, I'm in... Oh, I'm in uh, hang on, let's try that. So if I eat this, it will probably... It went up to 49. That's probably not the best example. I'll eat a few more, and then hopefully we'll see it slowly go up a bit. So that's 50. 51. 52. 52. Okay. That went up, that went down that time, probably because I went away from here. So 58-ish. So it does it does go up slowly, but it's such a low level that it does, you don't really see it that much. Um, but of course, in the config, you could give it like some items, like a really, really, really uh, high or really, really negative rad resistance, and then suddenly people will find themselves in loads of trouble. Uh, beach roots have a little bit of radiation resistance, and uh, golden leg from quark, the golden frog leg from quark is is. Uh, Decent for radiation removal. Well, I say decent. It's not that great, but removes four better than nothing, I suppose. Um, so there we go. That's food effects. You can, as I say, configure them. That's pretty cool. Um, next thing, uh, I've lost my place in the list now. Uh, added, added configurable mo block mutation effect. So you, some of you may have seen that video um, where I uh, irradiated that forest with the uh, Fallout uh, glow uh, theme in the background. Um, so you can go into the configs. It's disabled by default. But if we head into nuclear craft and go down to radiation. Um, you will see, uh, where is it? You will see, maybe it's higher up. Oh, here we go. 
radiation block mutations. Okay, so this is quite confusing. Um, basically, the way it works is, first of all, um, you have a mutation threshold. So, uh, first of all, the radiation level has to be higher than this for any block mutations to occur. Uh, the max rate uh, basically tells the game how quickly to try and mutate blocks. So the higher this is, then the faster um, in really dire situations, the faster things will get bad. Uh, if you set it to zero, then, then uh, no mutations will happen at all, and that's the default. And then here, you've actually got the block mutation scripts. So this is actually pretty confusing, uh, to be honest. Um, so the way it works, basically, is you uh, tell the game what uh, block to generate. So here, dry earth. Um, the next uh, variable is this one here, which is the radiation level uh, that has to be at before anything starts changing. And then you need to uh, give it all of the uh, different arguments for the sort of blocks it will mutate. Now, by default, um, in this config system, you have material properties. And they're pretty confusing, but you can read this big list to um, find out about them and find out which sorts uh, that you need. It's probably difficult to find out what sort of blocks have different material properties unless you know what you're doing. Um, but the alternative to this system is a much better system, which is Craft Tweaker recipes. So if you have Craft Tweaker, you can actually add block mutation recipes and they will get registered into the game um, you know, properly alongside these ones that are set with materials. So I recommend using the Craft Tweaker system, but if you don't have Craft Tweaker, then that's the way you have to do it. You have to use materials from the config. Um, so there we go, that's that. Uh, next thing is hardcore containers now read the fluid contents of tile entities. So if I put down this tank here um, and I put some Bacillium 247, uh, actually I probably need to turn on hardcore containers. Let's do that quickly. Go into the configs. Hardcore containers is, I think, somewhere here. Yeah, hardcore containers. Let's turn this up to max, which is one. Turn this on and hopefully this uh, thing will start generating quite a lot of radiation. See, there we go. It's already gone up to 855 nanorads. Uh, three microads, six microads, thirty microads. You can see this thing is actually generating radiation. This uh, this tank is actually generating radiation, and it's generating quite a lot as well. Berkelium is not the uh, most stable isotope in the world, so that's probably going to generate quite a lot of radiation. Now it's going back down again because we got rid of the scourge that is that uh, big pool of mess. Um, next thing, fission ports are no longer required to be placed in a particular direction. So now you can see they just have the same texture on every side. So you just plop it in the uh, plop it in the reactor any direction. So I can just uh, for example, stand looking sort of sideways while I place it in, and you will see that it still finds the fission reactor, um, which is quite nice. So the way it works now basically is um, the fission reactor, the actual controller, is the one searching for the port, which is obviously a much better way of doing it. Before, it was the port searching for the reactor, which gets messy very quickly um, and is nowhere near as performant. Uh, so when you first place the fission port down, it will look for the, the, the port will look for the controller because the controller uh, doesn't know that the port's been placed. The port does the search first. Um, and then when the um, when the structure gets broken or something, um, and the controller needs to reread the whole thing, uh, it will find the ports itself. The ports won't do any more uh, searching. So that is just a, a much better performance instead of the port trying to find the controller. It makes everything a bit easier and cleaner. No uh, chance of uh, making mistakes like putting it the wrong way around or anything. Um, so that's quite nice. Uh, next thing. Uh, added config option to switch to non-linear radiation scrubbing systems. So I'm going to actually quickly, I forgot to uh, re-log um, before doing this, but if, at the moment you can see that uh, the radiation scrubber tooltip is telling me that it's going to work this, the, the usual way. So the usual way that a scrubber works by default is that it removes a certain maximum, uh, there's a maximum sort of percentage of the radiation in the chunk that it will remove. And every single additional radiation scrubber you add will just linearly um, you know, increase the amount of radiation removal being done. So every single one will be a maximum of 12.5%. 12, 12 but if I now uh, log off and restart my game, give me a sec. Here we go. And uh, if we now look at the scrubber, I've now restarted my game. And uh, hopefully you'll see here that it uh, describes a slightly different system. So reduces the radiation levels before. Okay, but this time um, alone, you can see alone, it will remove a maximum of 20% of the radiation in its chunk. Okay, so that's alone. Um, although the collective contribution from all scrubbers in this chunk will stack non-linearly, the radiation level will fall approximately, linear, fall approximately linearly at first, but eventually doubly exponentially in the li limit of many scrubbers. So basically what that means is that, um, let's say the radiation level is 100 rads per tick. Now, if you're in that situation where it's 100 rads per tick, I just recommend running away. That's pretty bad. But let's just for simplification, say 100 rads per tick. Um, you put one of these things down, uh, at max, it will it will remove about 20 rads per tick, okay? But the second one that you put down will probably not remove quite as much as that, maybe like 19. And then the next one will remove maybe about 18. 
and the next one, and so forth. But once you get down to a very, very low radiation level, um, the actual contribution that each scrubber makes will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then as you get to incredibly low radiation levels, um, the contribution will, will, you know, in turn get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so the radiation level will slowly decrease, um, as it says there, doubly exponentially. For those who don't know, doubly exponentially is incredibly quickly. So the radiation level will fall very fast, but it won't ever quite get to zero, um, basically. Uh, I suppose if you put enough down, then it will be such a small number that uh, it will get to zero, basically. Anything below one femtorad is basically just considered to be zero by nuclear craft. So I suppose at some point you'll get it down to that, but it will take quite a lot of scrubbers to do that. Um, but this is sort of a slightly uh, different system, which means that you can't just completely remove the radiation from a chunk, um, but instead you can remove pretty much almost all of it and it's a system that is sensitive to the actual radiation level itself right because for very very small radiation levels you might not really care so much about um, you know doing that last five percent of radiation getting rid of that last five percent but if the radiation level is already really high then maybe suddenly that five percent really matters so five percent of 100 rads per tick is still five rads per tick that's still quite a lot so you will care more about getting rid of that and you might want to put more scrubbers to try and bring that level even further down so that's um, how the uh, alternative system works uh, it's disabled by default but it's in the configs for those who want it um, and I personally like it actually I personally like it better than the normal system um, So there we go. That was pretty cool One other thing that I nearly forgot about is that the Geiger counter now it's a good suggestion This the Geiger counter now actually reads the real radiation level of the chunk rather than the one that you're experiencing Of course it already says in the bottom left what I'm experiencing, but because of my uh, my radiation my hazmat suit uh, My rad resistance uh, is actually giving me a different value to what the chunk radiation is So the actual real chunk radiation level is 104 millirads per tick. That's actually pretty high and I think the reason it was really high is because of that bakelium tank that we had down before um, but you can see the real level is uh, like 52 76 whatever um, while I'm actually only experiencing one millirad per tick now if I put this cow down it might doubt it pretty quickly but you can see that I can uh, read its radiation level so I can read how many rads it's got it updates every so often um, so I can now actually read entities as well of myself so uh, that's pretty cool I suppose uh, if you uh, want uh, something like that uh, so nice little suggestion there but I'm going to put this thing out of its misery before, you know, it gets uh, uh, into a state like that fireman was in Chernobyl, because we don't we don't want cows to be in that state. And the final thing is uh, I haven't got Project E installed, but um, a lot of the sort of basic uh, items from Project E uh, from Nuclecraft will now have EMC values uh, for use in you know various Project E machines like the condenser and all that sort of stuff. And there we go. That is uh, that is everything in 2.17. Quite a lot. Um, we've only got one more to do, which is 2.18, and then finally I can put these update videos to bed. Um, and hopefully uh, I can concentrate on getting the overhaul done and maybe some better videos like tutorials on how to um, do fission reactors and so forth. Because I know there's a lot of people out there who are still very confused by the whole fission you know, reactor and fuel reprocessing system. Um, so maybe a video on that would be really useful. But anyway, yes, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.